This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. I'm going to talk about equity crowdfunding, and I'm going to talk about it in a general sense, but I'm going to give you a much more specific overview of what we're doing here at our crowd. And um, what I can say is that just I want to make one comment about David's presentation. I thought it was very fascinating stuff with Pulitzer and the penniless traveler. But when I look back to crowdfunding, I actually look back a little farther. Because the first really successful example of crowdfunding was the Mishkan. Okay, there's no question that our people, uh, the Jewish people here in Israel, have a long tradition of crowdfunding. And if you know the story of how the tabernacle or the Mishkan was built, basically Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, went out and said, send me your money. Everybody contribute whatever you would like to contribute. And what was the result? A very, very successful campaign so successful that he had to raise his hand and say, enough already. And it was very interesting, because later on, when they needed to upkeep the thing, okay, and to provide maintenance, nobody showed up, and they had to impose a tax, the chetzi shekel. So that gives you an idea about OPEX and CAPEX. We won't get into that. But the reality is that crowdfunding has been around for a very long time, and there's a strong connection in this country and our people to crowdfunding. So, Obviously, you know, after that presentation, you don't need to hear from Time magazine that equity crowdfunding or that uh, crowdfunding in general is ready to pop. The market is huge, five billion last year, over 10 billion this year. The biggest chunk is still the peer-to-peer -peer lending. Just to give you an idea of the size of Lending Club, which I am lucky to be an angel investor in from the very first round, um, Lending Club is now getting ready to issue almost a billion dollars of loans per quarter. Prosper, which is its closest competitor, has just crossed the billion dollar mark. Um, obviously, you heard about Kickstarter over a billion dollars. Indiegogo is doing very well. There are the donation sites, and now there's equity crowdfunding. And equity crowdfunding is perhaps the most exciting, but still the most nascent, the earliest of these uh, ventures. We started our crowd just in February of last year. So we're about 15 months into our experiment, and we'll show you some data in a second. Look. Clearly, what's happened with reward-based crowdfunding and Kickstarter is it's become one of the major ways for early-stage companies, especially with gadgets or hardware, to raise money in a great way that doesn't cost anything, okay? There's no equity given. You get tremendous uh, customer validation. You get marketing momentum like nothing else. And just you'll hear from Shy in a second from PowerUp how successful that channel can be. And again, we have all the same examples. This Pebble thing was the real game changer with $10 million, Star Citizen. We all have the same slides. But actually, what's interesting is that while it's exciting, do you know how many technology crowdfunding projects have crossed a million dollars on Kickstarter? I'm going to give you three numbers. I'm going to see a vote. 10, 100, or 1,000. Okay, so how many people think there have been 10 projects uh, on Kickstarter over a million dollars? Raise your hand. How many think 100? How many think 1,000? Okay, the real number is 19. 19. That's total number of technology projects that have raised more than a million dollars. And so while this is important, it's, again, still very early days in terms of raising, you know, we're all going through the same examples, right? The Pebble and the uh, Power Up and others, but it were still early days in this whole business. Um, Israelis are figuring it out, okay? The, I think the first one up was uh, Pressy, which makes that little pin. They raised $700,000. Uh, you'll hear from uh, Power Up, which raised close to $1.3 million. There's now a new... Israeli hero called Sayo, which we'll talk about in a second, one of our companies that's now closing in on two million is now the eighth most successful project on Kickstarter to date. But we discussed this Oculus problem, and I'm sorry that I missed Yesha's comments, but I want to raise it from a different perspective. It's great news for you know crowdfunding, right? All of a sudden, the crowd is wise. Within two years, people who give $2.4 million to a company, that company gets bought for $2 billion. How wonderful. Or not. Because the reality is these people who gave $2.4 million, what did they get? They didn't even get the goggles, by the way. They had no pre-sale of the goggles. They got a t-shirt. 
If they gave a lot of money, they got a chance to check them out. So here these guys get a t-shirt and the founders get rich. Something is unfair about that. And I couldn't have asked for better sort of PR or propaganda for the equity crowdfunding. Because now people say, well, how do you explain the difference between what you do and Kickstarter? And I say it's simple. With Kickstarter, you get a t-shirt. It may be the product, a little cheaper than you can get it later on. With us, you can get rich. Okay, you can literally, you might lose your money too. Okay, very often you will. But the reality is there's a big, big difference. And this has really caused a lot of interest to be directed towards the equity crowdfunding ar arena. Now, I mentioned this company, Sio. They make something which is about one third the size of this. And it's basically a molecular scanner that uh, if you've ever seen Star Trek, it's sort of like that tricorder, which basically measures all matter, both physical, biological, extraterrestrial, et cetera. This sounds like science fiction, but it's not. Basically, it'll tell you whether or not somebody put roofies in your drink, or how many calories are in the steak, or whether the kid's toy has lead in the paint, or there are peanuts in my salad. It's pretty wild stuff. So this company, which is, by the way, mid in its, in its uh, uh, campaign, I want to urge all of you, if you want to do something cool for Israel, just send a dollar to Kickstarter, because if you'll, right now we're up over about 8,000 uh, backers. I think the number is $1.7 million already. And these guys hopefully will get to three or four million dollars by the time they're done. What's interesting about this case is that we're pioneering something very, very new. And what we're pioneering is the ability to do both Kickstarter crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding on the same company. In fact, I don't know of a single company that's done both to date. I mean, I'll have to ask David to go research that and look at it. But literally, the way this company started is that Dove Moran gave them their first little bit of money. Dove is obviously very smart about gadgets and next generation devices. We followed and then crowdfunded very quickly for the next money. We were followed by Vinod Kosla of Kosla Ventures, very famous venture capitalist. And then they went stealth. We had to take everything off our website. They were hysterical about any kind of publicity. And they went stealth and into the lab for a year and a half. And then after that year and a half, they decided they wanted to launch the product. Product's not shipping yet, but they wanted to start launching the publicity and to create momentum. So what do you do? You go to Kickstarter, because today, forget the money, okay? It's just a great way to launch a consumer product. So they went to Kickstarter, but when we decided to make that decision, I said, hey, Dror, Dror Sharon, the CEO, why don't we, at the same time, crowdfund for some more equity? And he said, great. So this company, literally day one from their Kickstarter campaign, you could go and pre-buy the device or back the campaign or get the t-shirt, or you could go and get equity. And within two days, they had blown through their initial goal, which was $200,000. But in two days, we had raised $2 million okay, on our equity crowdfunding site. This company has now raised over $3 million in total on our crowd. It's one of our two $3 million deals. So what you're seeing is that an interesting data point, which I, you might ask me, why do I know that Kickstarter has only done 19 deals of over a million dollars? Because we've done 20. Okay, literally, we have more big deals for technology companies on our, quote, little site. Now, we're not so little. We're the largest equity crowdfunding site in the world. But we have more million-dollar-plus deals than Kickstarter does. Um, so just a quick overview about, about our crowd. We're now the global leader in equity crowdfunding. The reason we claim this is because nobody else has raised $50 million through the site. We just announced a $25 million equity finance round for ourselves, but that's in addition to the $50 million that has been invested now in 39 companies 15 months after starting. 20 companies with over a million dollars raised. We've had our first follow-on round, which was actually done in four hours. We had uh, actually, our, you'll see in a second, we've had even quicker rounds than that. We've got 5,000 investors accredited worldwide and about 500 of them who are active, who are actually writing checks. Our average investment is now about $100,000 on the site, about four companies, by the way, per investor. And our portfolio companies are doing well. We haven't had a failure, foot fu, bli, ayin, hurrah. Um, if you look at some, some fun stats, the fastest round which we funded was a company called CredFi. We just did a couple of weeks ago. It was literally done in 10 minutes. It was a little embarrassing because the way that we launch our, 
companies on the site is we send out an email urging people to join us for a webinar where the company presents its business plan and, and uh, discusses it for an hour on site. And 10 minutes into this webinar, it was fully funded. So one of my guys calls me and says, wait, do we pull the plug? Do we shut them up? I mean, you know, what are we doing? I said, no, of course not. People are on. They want to hear. Let them go. But literally, the, the deal was done because we work on a first come, first serve basis. And obviously, we're moving to bigger and bigger deals. Um, our fastest follow-on round was done. And a follow-on, we mean companies that go back to our site. Because unlike Kickstarter, uh, where maybe having been on the site is a detriment, by us, we want to keep on raising more and more money for these companies. And we've already uh, raised money for, I think it's 18 different companies in a second round, all, although we're only 15 months old. And I'm happy, by the way, to share any slides with anybody. You just got to ask me for the card. We'll send you the whole thing. Uh, our biggest round has been BioCatch, which was 3.3 million. Number of countries from which our investors come from are 30 different countries. And the follow-on rounds, I think, is here 16. That's actually 16 on site. Some of the companies have raised money, additionally not on site. So what we like to look at ourselves at, we're, we've been described sort of as a hybrid VC uh, crowdfunding operation because we're not pure crowdfunding, right? The way we work is that if you want to get on our crowd, you have to submit your company to us. And just like a venture capitalist or a good angel, we check these companies out. In fact, we only select 2% of the 100 deals that we see. We've actually been through over 2,000 deals to pick our 39 companies. And once we pick the deal, we actually put our own money to work in each and every deal. So it's, again, very different. I would feel really weird asking you to put money into a company if I wasn't putting my own money where my mouth is. And that was easy up to the first 39 deals. I'm going to keep on doing it, but I'm having to reach deep in my own pockets to make sure I can keep good on that promise. Um, what we do is we like to combine the best of angel investing with the best of venture capital. Now, let's face it, venture works, okay, for certainly the best funds. It gives you a professional group who select deals, a professional group who manage the deal negotiation and diligence process, a professional group who will work with the companies going forward, because it's not always just about funding. It's about helping the company grow. And that's all great. The problem from an investor standpoint is the best funds in the world that you would like to get into, the Kleiner Perkins, or the Sequoias, or the Excels, or the Benchmarks? You can't. They're closed. I don't care who you are, okay? Maybe Jeremy, okay? Maybe, because of his position. But no one else in this audience can get in. He's shaking his head. He can't get in either, okay? And the reality is that most people, 99%, can't get into these funds, 99.999. They're closed. Gone. I don't care if you have $100 million. Now, if you want to get into other good funds, like here in this country or whatnot, get ready to write a big check. You've got to write a million dollars, sometimes $5 million, and then you can get into those funds. Now, to be an angel, on the other hand, is a lot of fun, but it's lonely. You can meet a company, you, f you meet Shy, you fall in love with them, you hand them a $25,000 check, and away you go. But usually what you have to do is then you need to call up your buddies and say, Amos and Yossi, and uh, uh, Sheila, please send me some money. Give me $25,000 each, because we're gonna, 25 is not enough for him. We gotta put together a round. We need 250, we need 500. Who's gonna do the legal documents? Who's doing the diligence? Who's gonna sit on the board? Are we gonna get a board seat? But worse yet, what happens to our positions when we own shares directly in his company and the big boys show up? The venture guys come, first thing they do is they take special rights. Right? They take what are called preemptive and anti-dilution rights and drag along and tag along, so even information rights, the basic right to get information, and they have an ownership threshold. And that threshold is almost never met by an angel investor. You invested $25,000 into a company at a $5 million valuation, you can do the arithmetic, you have half a percent. And most of these ownership thresholds are sent at 5%, 4%. Occasionally, they'll be generous and say, we'll give these rights to the 2 percenters but not the guy who sent 25 grand. So I've got to hustle. Okay, wow, he had more time. I need, I, I need more time. All right, because I've got, what? <laughs> okay. Um, look, the bottom line is that our model is different. It combines both the best of angel investing with the best of venture. We select the deals, we support the deals, we sit on boards, you choose the deals. 
and you can choose the deals at $10,000 all the way up. This is a, a competitive matrix in terms of how we're doing with companies like AngelList or CircleUp. CircleUp just reported in the Wall Street Journal they've raised 30 million. AngelList won't, won't say anything. They have uh, something called syndicates, but the estimates are on our part about $30 million raised there. We're ahead of them. We're beating the guys in Silicon Valley. You might say, how is it possible that a crowdfunding outfit out of Jerusalem, Israel, albeit with 42 people working, is beating Silicon Valley? And the answer here has to be Israel, because there is a great number of people in our crowd who want to support Israel and support Israeli startups. And that's really what's giving us a lot of our early juice. Um, the structure is like a typical venture capital structure, except that we have these accredited investors instead of institutions. I managed venture capital in the past. I don't have money now from banks or from insurance companies. I have money from individuals, and we combine our own money into each and every deal. We've got a great team. Okay, I can't spend time. We have great mentors. We look for you know, smart companies that are addressing big markets. We're investing primarily in Series A companies, companies with traction. We're leaving the seed money to the angels. We'll do occasional seed behind serial entrepreneurs. This is our portfolio. It includes some very well-known companies, surprising companies. Companies like Hicon, which uh, the largest investor is Benny Landa. They're revolutionizing the digital packaging industry. Argo, which makes Rewalk, which is the well-known exoskeleton that's been rumored about some kind of a public offering. Freydos, which is behind a three-time winner, Svi Schreiber, doing uh, essentially rationalization of the logistics industry. Companies like Webidoo, which is essentially Wix for designers. Uh, Trendlines, which is in the process of a public offering, uh, a large uh, medical incubator. Abe's Market, which is the leading uh, e-commerce site for organic products, just completed a $10 million PE round. Uh, companies like eVigilo, which is saving lives in Chile from uh, uh, you know, disasters such as the uh, recent tsunami in terms of emergency alert systems. A company like Site Diagnostics, which is doing uh, malaria testing in a revolutionary way. Stack IQ from San Diego, which is a leader in the Hadoop clustering market. Companies like BioCatch, which was one of our large deals that uh, basically does automatic uh, authentication for security without passwords. And again, we've got a lot. This is Rewalk. She's, by the way, completing the London Marathon with Rewalk, which is amazing. Variegate in the water. Uh, essentially, it's smartphone applications for water irrigation site we talked about, eVigilo we talked about, Sio, you should go to uh, Kickstarter and look at it, VocalZoom, which is using optics to recognize speech recognition, Zula, which is uh, Jeff Pulver and uh, uh, Jacob Nerdavid, and essentially WhatsApp for business, Hikon we mentioned with Benny Landa, Move Interactive, which will make everybody into Tom Cruise from the movie Minority Report, uh, Takes, which is combining still and uh, video photography, Curio, which is Bob Rosenshine, who's taken his two prior companies public. Nextpeer, which is now up at 100 million. I've got to change the slide. They're just hitting 100 million users. They've been adding a million and a half users a day. It's a 23-year-old incredible entrepreneur. Parco, which is Ways for Parking. Native Flow, where it co-invested with JVP doing Bring Your Own Device. And if you look at some of the entrepreneurs, these are people who've had successes, who have gone to crowdfunding. And this has been the most gratifying part of our whole deal, which is that we didn't think initially it would be easy, and it wasn't, to get entrepreneurs to go to this platform. Because entrepreneurs don't know it. They say, well, wait, what's, what's crowdfunding? Okay? I mean, I know what venture is. I know what you know, angel investing is. But how, do I, how does it work? And the reality is it's working very, very well. And we're putting up about a deal each week. We're being inundated by deal flow. Um, we've co-invested with these guys. These are the uh, the venture people who've co-invested with us, two deals with Vinod Kosla, a deal with Li Kaxing, Battery Ventures, Microsoft, Excel, Index, JVP, Cedar, 3M. We've got a big partnership with uh, General Electric, okay, where they're actually joining us on the platform and cherry-picking deals, working very well with them. Uh, we have a portfolio reserve. The press has been extremely kind to us, and we're really proud that we've done this from Israel. Okay, in other words, um, we intend to keep our headquarters here. Our headquarters will continue to be in Jerusalem. We're now you know, one of the fastest growing companies in Jerusalem with 42 people. We're looking to hire more people. We just finished a $25 million round for ourselves, and we look forward to making crowdfunding history here in Israel. Thank you. This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.